Welcome back, everybody, to the Wind Waker HD playthrough. This is part 11, and we're still here in Windfall Island. I know, it's unfortunate. But we'll be leaving here soon as once once we finish up, you know, the little uh, side quests and the things that we gotta collect. You know, we're, we're going treasure hunting, I guess you could say. <clears throat> so I think we're all uh, familiar with this cutscene by now. Of course, it was in the last part. And, uh, yeah, like I said, I forgot to do something while I was here the last time. And like I said, you gotta take a picture of the two of them together. Well, that's good enough. Whatever. Alright, <clears throat> and uh, they don't seem to mind that. They just let you leave with uh, a picture of the two of them, like some sort of uh, evidence or something. Ah! Alright, I completely forgot I uh, sped this part up. Talk to these, uh, these gossipy ladies. And then, I gotta show them that picture that I just took. And once I do, this is... Huh, oh, it's that lady we always gossip with. <clears throat> uh, huh. Oh, they're just old friends. Huh. She could never bag a man. Well, that's always nice. You know, we're, uh... Another treasure chart. We're, uh... Instilling good values in these people, you know, just that's what Link does, you know, where everywhere he goes He just kind of spreads a uh, good cheer like Santa Claus except in green Alrighty, so now we move on past the emo dude who just blocked me. So. All right. I see how it is Okay, I think we should well, almost be done. That's right. Yeah, there's one more thing we got to do <clears throat> For uh, of course some more treasure We got to talk to this guy if you all recall, this is the guy that we had to take the picture of uh, when he was talking to that one girl and then give it to the, the photograph guy. And uh, yeah, apparently he's talking about, you know, the that girl. That girl! <laughs> the girl that he has a crush on. Now we gotta go talk to her because we are now, that this is now, we're now Cupid. This is, this is what's happening here. So we gotta to, uh, we gotta talk to this girl play matchmaker and uh, yeah she can put jars on her head and walk around hmm I wonder who that was <clears throat> alrighty I do have a picto box and it's in color that means I'm rich leave it to me sure I guess so yeah because I'm uh, I'm such a perfectionist sort of it took me a number of tries to actually get that specific picture. Link was driving me crazy with all the moving around and stuff. It was, it was killing me. So uh, I just said screw it, and I just went with that picture because that was good enough. A bunch of little piggly wigglies. Okay, the crazy old man he hasn't bothered me in a while because I've been remembering to not get in his way, so he doesn't, you know, harass me. Here's that picture. Ah, oh, this girl. <laughs> yep, that's the one. <laughs> Hook me up with her, will you? It's gotta be done, buddy. <laughs> For coffee, of course. <laughs> Why would you think it would be anything else that the two of them would drink together? Psh, come on. Alright, so we go to the cafe bar. For some cafe. Because uh, that's, that's coffee in French, isn't it? Cafe? Anyway... Gotta talk to these two. You have to. Oh, I've completely forgot. You have to play the song of passing twice to make a whole day pass, and then you go here, and then you talk to these two, and uh, yeah, they're on their date. And we get something actually worthwhile for that. Well, I mean, I guess the treasure charts are worth it, but that's more of a you know a, a here and now bonus rather than a, you know a investment type bonus like the treasure chart. All right. So now we're uh, starting back up with our pieces of heart. We've got one out of four. And now... <laughs> I did it again. And now we get the heck out of here with our new... Any second now. Our new Swift Sail. This is it. All right. So I decided to, uh, you know, just do the whole regular old sailing thing without any sort of speed up. Just to show uh, how much faster the, uh, the Swift Sail is. My god. That was interesting. I have a pretty, uh, pretty solid sense of direction, is what I have. But, uh, aside from that, uh, you know, and, and also, you know, a number of times where, you know, I'd, I'd play Minecraft or something and go get lost somewhere, somewhere really far away and then just manage to, you know, just from memory, 
remember where my house is and stuff, even when I'm like something thousand blocks away, you know? Anyway, enough of that bragging. Uh, so I think, oh no, I actually didn't get to any uh, information in the last part. That's right, because I was having too much fun. Uh, so I'm going to finish up the release section here. And for a limited time, Walmart customers could buy a special GameCube bundle, including the Wind Waker, the Ocarina of Time bonus disc, and a link cable to connect a, ga a Nintendo GameCube with a, nin with a Game Boy Advance. Ah! In Australia, a collector's edition was available with the purchase of two GameCube games or a GameCube console. Australians could also purchase a bundle with the console, the Wind Waker, and the collector's edition for a limited time. And of course, you know, you need the, um, <clears throat> the, what's it called, the, what's it called, the link cable for the Game Boy Advance uh, to the GameCube for the Tingle, uh, is it the Tingle Tuner? I forgot. Anyway, uh, oh, hey, what do you know, the, the, oh, hey, it just, it, it just said it right here as I'm getting to this new section for the Wii U version. Huh, wonder what that game is. Uh, in a Nintendo Direct presentation released on January 23rd, 2013, a high-definition re-release of the Wind Waker was announced for the Wii U, slated for release in October 2013. New features include off-TV play and Miiverse integration. The remastering came about as the development team experimented with art styles for the next main Zelda title, also in development for the Wii U. HD remasterings of the later Zelda games in the series, Twilight Princess and Skyward Sword, were also tested during the planning stages, but the development team considered the Wind Waker's visual to be the most improved. You know, I find this genuinely just really freaky when it gets all stormy out at sea. It just, it, you know, it's a bad omen, man. It's a bad omen. Uh, the Nintendo Direct also stated that they would be tuning the gameplay, which during E3 2013 was revealed to mean that a faster sailing mode had been added to lessen travel time across the ocean in the later half of the game. Hmm, wonder where I can find that item. <laughs> IGN noted improved dynamic lighting and shading in the game's graphic engine. In the Wii U version, the Tingle Tuner item, which used the Game Boy Advance as a peripheral to the GameCube, has been replaced with the Tingle Bottle, since the Game Boy Advance is surprisingly incompatible with the Wii U, which is used to send messages to the game's Miiverse community if players are in need of help. Ha! Huh. I never I never get tired of his face when he pulls up the treasure. I just, I think that's adorable. All right, what do we got this time? Hey, make it up for uh, that money that I lost, sort of. <laughs> I, you know, I would have gotten this anyway, but hey, you know, uh, I just, uh, it just kills me just to think about like, how much did I lose? It was like, whoa, what's up with this camera angle? Holy crap. Um, it's, God, it was like 150 rupees, wasn't it? Ah, that kills me. Anyway, I mean, I guess that's probably not a lot in the grand scheme of things, but just like for this early portion of the game, you know, considering that 500 is the maximum that you can have at this point, 150 is like a lot. Uh, let's see, along with uh, graphical updates, the HD version for Wii U offers various new features. Hang on, my phone's quacking. From the original GameCube version, the Wii U GamePad's touchscreen serves as an inventory allowing players to freely assign items to certain buttons, which is, it's very convenient. I love, oh yeah, I loved that camera angle in specific because it took so long that it zoomed around so that you can see Link's expression just go, ooh! <laughs> Yay, more money. All right. I like money, dude. You know, it's, it's pretty good. Money makes the world go around. Um... The touchscreen can also be used to control certain items, such as Link's wind baton, whilst some weapons... Really? I can use the Wind Waker to with the touchscreen? Huh. I didn't even know that. While some weapons, like the bow, can be aimed using the gamepad's gyroscopic features, the game also supports off-TV play on the gamepad. With this new technology allowing for faster loading of the ocean, players can now unlock faster speeds for their ship. There are also tweaks to certain aspects of the original game that were considered tedious, such as cuts to the wind baton sequences. Anyway, I don't know, why does it keep calling it the wind baton? Isn't it the wind waker? Maybe there's some sort of new item that I'm not familiar with that hasn't come up yet? Anyway, speaking of coming up, here's this treasure. More treasure. <laughs> I like that stuff. <clears throat> I like how, um... Doo -doo -doo. I love that little tune. Um, 
I like how they made it, you know, nice and obvious, you know, that big rainbow glow that you can see just like, from super far away. Hey, it's that fish jumping around. Twing! We go with the, uh, the swift sail. But yeah. They, they could have just made it so like, you know, you just hear it, you know, just like go with the audio clues rather than the big rainbow glow. And now this time, we are not getting money. We're getting something a little bit better. A piece of a heart. So now we're halfway there to another heart. Yay. All right. Oh my God. That camera angle just kind of freaks me out. It just like zooms in a lot and just boing, just zoom. It just seemed like a torpedo through the water. All right, so here we are back at the uh, place. Um, the Forest Haven, that's it. I was trying to think of the name. So now this specific area that I'm at is the uh, place that I jumped to across from where the arrow is that I'm supposed to actually go. It was the place where I, you know, I had to glide to and then jump at that baba bud and then go, go even higher. Yeah, so once I go outside here, there was a little cutscene that showed me that there were things across the ocean. Huh. Maybe I want to go there. All right. So that was the first time I played the Win Winds Requiem in this specific uh, playing session. I, I guess it just kind of does that every time you play a specific song. Now, it's funny because when I was editing this, remember how I said, you know, the last time I did this, I could have just fallen and then just quickly pulled out the, the Deku Leaf just before I hit the ground? Well, I actually did that inside the Forest Haven, but then forgot to do it here. I guess it's not a big deal because I only took a quarter of a heart of damage, but uh, I don't understand how I like I thought about it earlier, then didn't think about it later when I was even higher in the air. Anyway, this weird nerdy guy with the uh, bag over his uh, shoulder is telling me that uh, the button to open this place is an inconveniently far away place. Anyway, gotta pull out the telescope, and uh, he will sort of guide me telling me that uh, it's that big bright diamond thing right there yeah gotta zoom in on it a lot now I thought something was supposed to happen when I like zoom in on it really far you know maybe something something would have happened but no it's did not nothing actually happens you just you're just doing that to see where it is anyway now we need to pull out the Huey pear and we take control of a seagull this is what this actually looks like when you use the Huey pear just kind of flapping around. Kind of reminds me of pilot wings a little bit. Pilot seagulls. Hey! Using that seagull to just kind of bash its face into that button. And God, look at the way he walks. What? <laughs> Why did he jump in like that? Alright, that was weird. Anyway. So. Whoa. Whoa. Link looked like he was in some sort of a, a trance. Trancy pants. Anyway, so uh, I seem to have forgotten that the wind was actually blowing against the way that I was uh, trying to glide. So I gotta do a little bit of that swimming stuff. Luckily, it's not too far away, so I don't drown. And, uh, oh, hey, a message in a bottle. But what did I say the last time when I screwed up really badly? A bottle in a, bottle in a jar? Was that it? <laughs> I don't even remember it was that bad. Anyway, so a little bit more time skippery. And now we're gliding on over to the arrow portion. Finally, we're going back to the main storyline. Hooray! Just got to take a moment to just, you know, give a little round of applause. We're finally back in this. It took about, what was it? I think I did like 10 minutes worth in, in the last part. I think it was more like five. Out of like, it was like 28. So yeah, there's like another 23 plus the like 13 here. So that was almost... 40 minutes of not doing the main storyline. This is side questing. Holy crap! This is a big game, what can I say? And that was even with, like, super speed and time skips and stuff. Anyway, so now we gotta make the wind move. What was that, northwest? I can't remember. And, uh, gonna talk to this weirdo. I, I still can't get over the fact that these things used to be humans. I, I can't imagine, like, evolving into, like, this wooden thing with a lily pad for a face. That's just... That's just really freaky. Okay, so as this guy's telling me, I gotta use the Deku Leaf, and I'm at the mercy of the wind as I jump off to my po possible death here. That's basically what he's telling me. And uh, we gotta jump off, use the Deku Leaf, and make sure that our magic is pretty much at full, because we're gonna need it. 
This is a lot of gliding here to this uh, little, this little tree-like island. And then we drop down. And then we got to uh, fill it back up once again. Luckily, there's plenty of stuff here. Okay, talk to this uh, other weirdo. I am indeed mastering it. Thank you for noticing. I appreciate the praise. <coughs> yeah, updrafts, yes, okay. So that updraft that I kind of dodged around wasn't really like necessary to dodge around it, but it will be necessary now because as this purple guy explained, we got to use it to go up higher. Again, this is reminding me of pilot wings. Whoops, that was backwards. That sounded like NBC. <laughs> NBC. I don't know. Anyway. Okay, so now... Oh, now we're doing northwest. Oh, it was southwest earlier. My bad. Sorry that I didn't get my cardinal directions down. All right. So now we got to wait for this uh, updraft. Now, if anybody knows, you know, has played this game, you're probably noticing that I'm... I'm doing it wrong here. I'm waiting a way too long. And that was an unfortunate misstep on my part because, again, this is my very first time trying this. And I jumped off way too late. And then I missed it completely. <laughs> so, once again, anybody who's played this game knows that, uh, well, they know what's coming next. Um, bad stuff, man. Bad stuff. I like how you can see Link's shadow there in the, the ocean. Not anymore. But yeah, once you fall in and you're a little bit too far from shore, yeah, that's a game over, bro. Sort of. I mean, it's not really, but you know. Anyway, <laughs> anybody who's played this game will notice that I forgot to refill my magic bar. So that was fill number two on this specific area. Let's try it a third time. Getting a heart. Okay, jump off nice and early. Okay, actually hit the updraft. Alright, we're just kind of riding this sucker out. Okay, now we got plenty of time, and I gotta deal with these guys. But, uh, yeah, dodge the first one, and the second one, and then the third one has to be the hero that Gotham needed, apparently. So a little bit more time, Skippery, and I managed to dodge them this time. <sighs> Phew. It's kind of free. Oh, they're coming for me. Quick, get inside. <laughs> oh, God. Oh no, I really, that was not something I wanted to see. We finally made it. The Forbidden Woods! So, if that's any indication, this is dungeon number two. Of course, it's called the Forbidden Woods. And right off the bat, we've got uh, a, a welcoming committee. Now, I would, like, you know, with the Goma fight, I was very, you know, unaware of how to use my grappling hook in battle. I thought that I was supposed to, like, you know, actually go into, like, the grappling mode. And then, like, throw it at them. So, yeah, this was a little bit painful to watch here. Like, I, I just kept, like, doing it over and over. There we go. Now I understood. So, I think it was the walkthrough specifically was telling me the thing about how you can use the grappling hook to instantly take items away from enemies. If you, you know, whack them with it. Uh, but I don't think it's really necessary with these guys. Because... I don't know, like, from what I was watching, it just seemed like they dropped the, the chew jelly, like, 100% of the time, so it, it, this wasn't even that necessary, but again, you know, I was just trying to do what the thing told me, because, you know, I don't want to, want to mess up or anything. Like, I've already been, I, I, yeah, you know, I've already messed up enough so far in this playthrough, I really don't need to do any more of it. Alright. So now those guys are gone. See, look, he just like instantly dropped his chew jelly. That was the one that I didn't actually pull with the grappling hook. I don't know what was going on with this grass. It's like dead grass. It literally had nothing in it. Oh, great. Well, that's not really what I was looking forward to here. Um, you know, I actually forgot what those dudes are called, but I will look it up very quickly. Should tell me. I'm not seeing it. Or I'm just kind of... Oh, the P-Hats. That's it. P-Hats. Those were the guys outside that uh, whacked me while I was trying to glide. Anyway, so that seed that I walked up to and then walked away is actually a little bit more important than I guess I imagined. Um, but yeah, again, I was trying to find stuff in this grass, but there's just nothing. Also, this music's a little, a little too spooky. Oh, man. Ugh, these guys are everywhere. And then, of course, you know, I, just, I have to use the grappling hook just, like, every single time. So, these, these battles are taking a lot longer than they really should. 
Or not. Yeah, not using it here. Okay, yeah, okay, so those two that I just killed didn't. Yeah, see? I killed both of them, and they both dropped two jelly. So, whatever. Anywho's, we're gonna open up this treasure chest. Now, what's inside? The dungeon map! Already? Jeez, I was like. Pfft. <laughs> barely had to do anything and get the dungeon map for this specific dungeon. So that's very convenient. Although I think... I don't... Mm, yeah, I guess the dungeon maps are always kind of close to, like, the beginning of the dungeons. But, um... That one... That's literally in the first room. Anyway, so now I gotta pick up the seed. And it's, I think that's a seed. That looks really freaky. And I gotta aim it at this uh, glowing eye thing that kind of closes up when I get close to it. Yeah, I kind of got to whack it while I'm far away. Because that's how that works. Didn't quite do well the first time. Only hit a couple of the vines. And then, there we go. Killed that sucker. I, I was waiting for, like, you know, some kind of thing to happen. You know, like, do 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 But, uh, no. Not, not this time. <laughs> not for those things. Those things aren't worth it. Okay. So, as you can see, we got a bunch of bobble buds here. And we need to go down, actually. Uh... A, a couple of, or I should say, yeah, a couple of these uh, Baba Buds are actually trapped. They're actually uh, the um, Bo Boko Baba Buds. Yeah, those guys. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I gotta beat those guys up. Make sure that they get out of here first, and then I gotta use one of the Boko Sticks and uh, do that thing again with the eye, although it's a little bit different this time. Because I kind of gotta, here we go, pick up the stick, and unfortunately, well, there's the problem. Problem up ahead. Yeah, those guys. They really... There's a lot of these guys. Oh, wow. That looked like I almost hit it. There's a lot of these guys in this dungeon, and I really don't appreciate it, because they're very annoying. <sighs> Get out of here. And then, of course, I had to do that. It's like, ah, oh, it was so necessary. Ah. Well, you know, that's the point of uh, being a, a, a noob. You, know, you do noob, inexperienced type things, like... Like, you know, I was under the assumption that I absolutely had to hit them all the time with the grappling hook. Despite the fact that I killed, you know, several of them so far, and they still dropped their chew jelly, and it didn't even matter. It doesn't even stun them for that long. It just, like, you know, bops them, and then they just immediately just, like, sink into the ground. Gee, thanks. Alright, here's that other Boko stick. I just kind of got to aim it and throw it, and there, hit that eye. So yeah, several attempts later, just kind of do that there. No, several attempts later, I just timed it incorrectly. <laughs> okay, so now we can open this, and all that was worth a knight's crest. Hooray. Again, I you know, I'm not skilled in the ways of the sword, so I'm not aware of how valuable that crest actually is. Whether or not, I don't know, do I like, sell it? Do I get money for it? Do I make a new equip with it? Who knows? I mean, I'm sure all other people know, so I really shouldn't say who knows, but uh, I don't, so there you go. Alright, so, whoops. <laughs> so now I have to use some um, Baba Bud plus Deku Leaf gliding action here. Kind of like the uh, the duo of, of uh, cool, I guess. We go gliding. Gotta hit this Baba Bud. Go up here while I read more information about the music. The music in The Wind Waker was composed by Kenta Nagata, Hajime Wakai, Toru Minigishi, and Koji Kondo! Hey! Uh, the game soundtrack, Zelda no Densetsu, Kaze no Takuto. Original soundtracks, blah 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 blah. Uh, was released on March 19th, 2003 and comes in a two-disc set featuring 133 tracks! Holy crap! The music has an Irish influence and some peach pieces feature... Eulian pipes? I have no idea how to pronounce that. As I'm uh, fighting more of these jerks. Right next to a, uh, a bomb flower. That seems very, uh, very dangerous. Let's see. It looks like... Oh. Ilian pipes. Ilian pipes. Ilan? Ilan. Ilan pipes. That's it. Yeah, there's like a whole pronunciation thing here on the Wikipedia article for it. Illin pipes. Yeah. Crazy Irish words having weird pronunciations when they look a lot more complicated, but like they, they when you sound them out, they're so much simpler. All right. So now we're done with that. 
bombed the heck out of that eye thing. And now we gotta use the secondary effect of the, uh, the Deku Leaf, and that's to blow air. We gotta use that to make this lift come to us. It's very fancy. Pretty sneaky, if I, if I say so myself. Now we gotta do something even sneakier, and while we're standing on this lift, we gotta use the, uh, the Deku Leaf as sort of like a counter propulsion system. Just keep on using it to, uh, propel ourselves up. Pretty, pretty simple and effective. Oh, see, now this, this grass actually has stuff in it, so yeah. I think, yeah, I, th I think maybe there is, like, sort of like a dead grass. But, uh, anyway, this is how you actually have to kill those jerks. The pea hats. Yeah. Actually, well, there's a, a couple other ways that you can kill them. Uh, one of which will be shown later in this dungeon when we get, uh, some sort of fancy new item. But in the meantime, the only way to, for me to, uh, beat them up is, well, if I can get up there quickly, oh is to uh, hit them with wind. Because, you know, they fly, so apparently air is just like their their hardest counter. That makes sense. All right. Great, what an amazing drop. Like, I just imagine, like, you know, the enemies and, you know, the further, the harder dungeons, they would drop, like, cool stuff. It's like, no, this guy literally drops crap. <laughs> he drops the stupid magic bottles or whatever. Thanks. I really have a tough time trying to, like, engage fights on these guys. They always seem to hit me more often than I hit them first. Gotta make sure I get those seeds, man. Those are useful for potion making. Yes. Okay, now as I kill this guy, and I think this happens a few times in this dungeon, uh, he turns into just a regular Baba Bud that I can use to, uh, shoot myself up. Hey! Going on up here. And then once again up here. And then once we get up here, I must say that is the end for this video. Join me in part 12, where we'll be doing more stuff in the uh, Forbidden Woods. See you all next time.